A StarCraft strategist has the ability to combine the innovative, perceptive, and holistic insights of a build order with the pragmatic and systemic skills of a pro to guide strategic direction in the StarCraft universe. Introducing The Strategist. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode three of The Strategist. My name is Octane Pro, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, Buddha. Buddha, how's it going this week? It's going just swell, Octane. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, hopefully our fans there uh, didn't get sick of hearing Clutch's voice tonight. Uh, you did actually hear it again in our intro there, so thanks again to MLG's Clutch for helping out The Strategist with that lovely vocals. Uh, on another note, um, anything in the StarCraft 2 news you've kind of seen over the past week or so that kind of uh, our viewers might be interested in? Yeah, well, of course, everyone tonight, uh, hopefully this isn't spoiling it for anyone since it was <laughs> it ended like an hour ago, but yep. NASL uh, Grand Finals, man, Stefano rolled over everybody. Yeah, it was uh, really impressive, actually. Uh, a buddy of mine messaged me, he goes, oh, Zerg is OP. I said, Zerg is not OP. I said, when you put a race like that into someone like Stefano's hands, who has mastered it? I was like, it looks OP, and it did. Like four and O was really amazing. But I think Stefano crossed all of his T's, dotted all of his eyes, and did an amazing job. He was absolutely ready for everything. He crushed everyone really, really easily, and yeah. uh, that, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you catch any of uh, Scarlet's matches at all uh, earlier today? Uh, I saw him in the grand finals for WCS Canada. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not before that. Okay, okay. Yeah, he, he played um, almost as flawlessly. It was a little bit more even with some of his matches. It was a little more exciting compared to like a 4-0 uh, blowout. But uh, either way, uh, well, there's a lot going on uh, in the StarCraft Two community just tonight. Um, and uh, believe it or not, things actually worked out great for the strategist being a little bit later. Uh, we would hate to kind of stream at the same time as NASL or the WCS. But um, either way, let's go ahead and uh, let's move into the main focus of the show. Uh, today's show is the Terran um, One Racks Fast Expand uh, with some little follow up uh, kind of variations and stuff like that. So um, against what, against Zerg specifically. Yes, yes, against yes. Zerg. Yes. And uh, why don't we jump into the build order? Just kind of go over that before we jump in the replays. So uh, you start out with a ten supply depot, uh, very very common. Uh, you then move into your twelve barracks, a fifteen sixteen orbital command. It all depends on your timing. Uh, plus additional marine right away, um, followed up by a 16 command center, uh, which is usually right about the three minute and ten minute mark, three three minute and ten second mark. I'm sorry, and uh, we put that number out there because we want you guys to focus on that. You know, as you're doing the build, practicing the build, you know, aim for that timing. Um, and then finally, 17 depot, and then you follow up uh, with a variety of different things. And that's kind of what we're going to go over today. Um, this is a simple cookie cutter build. You could completely finish this and master it um, first a computer or a practice partner after about an hour or two but it's the follow-up that really matters so the build order sets the pace but it's the follow-up that really matters and, and sets the uh, rest of the game there um, yeah so we're gonna go over a bunch of replays of course and uh, we're gonna show you how the build kind of pans itself out at the beginning of course but it's the follow-up we're gonna focus on because getting that initial part down is is relatively easy in the grand scheme of things and we want to focus on uh what people are doing after that to to help them win the game essentially correct correct uh if we jump into our keynotes right there just a few things to kind of go over with you guys um hellions are used for map control and also to deny and slow creep uh, against your opponent so the entire time especially right out of the gates there you know use your hellions to your advantage um scout a little bit um, you know, see what you can find, but the biggest thing, deny that creep spread. You see some of these pro players, which do so well stopping Zerg, uh, especially with like the queen, uh, kind of the changes to the queen mechanics in the previous patches. Uh, I don't know about you, Buddha, but you definitely see more and more queens now coming from Zerg and making it a little bit harder to deny that creep. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and you know, it's something that, that Terran players are kind of a little bit complaining about these days and it is harder to deny creep spread it really is but you have to get your hellions out there you know as soon as you see a tumor go down go up and try to snipe it 
uh, just be really annoying. You know, you could even like try to run around a little bit and take a little bit of damage mm -hmm. so that the queens have to go back and not creep spread or defend the front of their creep or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll follow up with those notes there too. Um, most of the uh, one racks uh, fast expand is followed up uh, by mass bio or by tech, uh, either going into banshees. Um, and then furthermore, that's followed up actually by fast third. And this entire opening um, is designed for macro game. It's not a quick win it, you know, within the first 10 minutes or so. It's really meant for the long-term uh, macro game there. And uh, anything else there, Booty, you'd like to add a keynote before we move into our scouting information? Nope, let's go. All right, excellent. So for scouting, guys, um, as Taryn and your TVZ, you want to use your scans to uncover your opponent's tech. And, and what we mean by that is... Um, in the meantime, you're going to have, you know, Hellions around, around the map, and you're going to have units kind of back and forth checking for thirds and timings and stuff. But the big thing is you always want to see what your opponent's tech is. Um, and what the scan allows you to do is Terran. I mean, it's, it's a very powerful tool. You either use it for your mules or you use the energy for scanning. You scan and try to see, okay, is my opponent going with roaches? Uh, now I know, you know, how to follow up and what units to counter. Um, is he going with mutas or vice versa? Yeah, of course, the most important tech choice that we need to look at is the Infestor or Muted choice. And, uh, you know, that's going to drop at any point depending on when they take their gases. So yeah. poking with your Hellion, seeing how many units they have, when they get speed, all these things are very important to see when their Lair tech is going to come out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, you want to go and you want to get the Hive timing. You know, the earliest Hives come up at like 11 minutes and 30 seconds so early. But then, like, we can also have, you know... 18, 19, 20 minute hives. So depending on how much tech your opponent makes, uh, you really have to be able to get a read on that. And it's something that's difficult, but that you need to keep in the back of your head so you can get used to it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then finally here, guys, um, as we were saying there, you're just going to poke with your Hellions to display the unit count, as we did mention, and then you're all ins along with expansion timings, uh, which are very important. You want to know, you know, is he taking that third? Or if he's not, are you expecting an early pressure? So um, just a few little things about scouting uh, with TVZ kind of keep note of uh, and keep in the back of your mind, you know, what's going on. Uh, and then finally here, um, just kind of a uh, side note, uh, the Reactor Hellion follow-up. Um, to follow up with the one racks Fast Expand, um, it is a 21 double gas, um, and then the five-minute factory, a reactor on your barracks, and then you swap your factory with your barracks. And that's very typical. I mean, I, what would you say, 75%, 80% of the time, Buddha, you would really see this? Yeah, we rarely see straight bio play after a one racks expand. It's typically um, a reactor helium follow up into something else. So yeah. uh, this is definitely the most common variation in the pro scene and in you know just masters, grandmasters league for TBZ. And uh, yeah, I think we're good to jump into a game and kind of show people that what we're talking about. Okay, excellent. Sounds good. Well, let's go ahead and jump into game one, and uh, let's get everything loaded up here. Uh, we are on faster. And uh, Buddha, are you into the game? Yes, sir. All right, let's go ahead and get started in three, two, and one. And just got to turn on my volume here. Sorry about that, guys. Excellent. There we go. And in the bottom left hand corner, representing the Red Terran, is my I am. How would you even say that name, Buddha? I'm it's, it's my intense McLeod. Wow. Uh, wow. I like <laughs> It's like, really? It's like, come on now. So. Well, we'll yeah, see. these are games that I had to cast for ISTL, actually. That's why okay. I. Where I Got a lot of this stuff from. Okay, so, so we're gonna start over here, guys. In the bottom left-hand corner, representing the red Terran, is my intense <laughs> McLeod. And uh, at the top right, we have the WCS UK's champion, uh, Zikto Mini. So wow. uh, a really solid player he's playing against. McLeod, of course, a Grandmasters player on the North American server. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, both these guys are very, very, very high-level players. And uh, yeah, we already see that ten depot going down. Of course, at the front, very standard. Uh, not gonna learn anything from this point at the game. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I can add is for very, very new players, like just learning bronze level, um, need to point out the reason the supply depot is going at the front is to start to begin a wall, which will wall off the top of the ramp. It's super, super basic and beginner, but it does matter uh, when you're going to get Zerg and if they do send a ling or anything, up, a few lings up, uh, this wall off does allow you to block that off. But for anyone higher than that, you completely understand this and this should be molded into your mind. But Go, jumping back in, uh, 12, we do have the barracks, which is pretty typical. Uh, you will notice no gas at this point for the Terran player. Yeah, and, uh, you know, again, McLeod uh, actually sent his SAV to the corner of his base to search for that overlord. So now he knows his opponent is cross positions and not close by air. 
when he sends his initial SUV scout, we're going to see that, you know, he uses that information correctly. And uh, the little things like this are just really cool, man. I love seeing high-level play and all the little tidbits they get out of, you know, information that most people wouldn't think to look for. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. So right now, we do see, coming out of our Zerg player, just a little scout there with his drone. And uh, right away, we do see Marine coming out and the Orbital Command going down. So this is pretty basic, pretty much what we saw out of um, the build order slide that we had up for you guys earlier. So that Marine's going to pop out here just to pretty much, you know, take care of that drone, you know, kind of shush off that drone a little bit. And there it is right away, and he pops down the command center at the natural. Um, in the meantime, yeah. we, we do have an SCV kind of traveling up the map. Yeah, it's uh, 3 minutes and 10 seconds that command center goes down, and we start the second depot. One thing to note about a one rack expand is we've been seeing the one depot one rack expand for a really long time now, yeah. and uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent. So you only make one Marine, and then you start that supply depot. Uh, after your command center, and you continue SCV production. So you're cutting Marines out of your build, and uh, we're going to see a double gas come down right now around the four-minute mark, and uh, that's going to allow us to get a very fast factory and, you know, get some map control. Yep, definitely, definitely. So uh, check that out. Um, you can definitely see right now, you know, this is kind of what we talked about with the reactor Hellion type of combination. Now, in the meantime, you will see, too, is SCV is scouting right now. So he's getting the opportunity to see what his opponent's going. He does see the, the expansion there with the hatchery. He doesn't see any gas when he went up the ramp there, and uh, he did see the spawning pool. So he has a general understanding of what his opponent's going. And you can see right now, like, these lings are just following the SCV. Uh, so it gives him an idea of where his units are, too. He goes, okay, the lings are there, and he follows up with some Marines, which is perfect in order to counter that. And uh, following that up from there, uh, the gas is occupied now. Yep, and uh, uh, McLeod just making SCVs, starting his factory, and starting a reactor right away. And uh, one thing we're going to see from him is a super fast third command center. And uh, he's, of course, just using the Hellions to make sure there's not an all incoming, it be a little bit defensive with his map control. And uh, he's going to get a very fast third. It's going to allow him to get his SCV count up. Yep. And uh, then we're going to see what his tech choice is after that. Yeah, definitely. And as you can see, he builds his third in his natural. Because right now, he doesn't really have a large army at this point. I mean, he's got four Marines at the top, nothing too crazy. So it's a very wise choice for him to go ahead and uh, just build the command center uh, at the very top, which is very wise. And then he can float it down to the appropriate location of his third right there. Yep. So uh, uh, Reactor Hellions going to come out right now. He's just swapping these two buildings. And we're going to see a starport come down. And uh, this starport's going to be for Banshees. He's not going for Cloak. He's not going for a gimmick. He tried to win the game. He's going to use these Banshees to really uh, force his way down the front of the Zerg player and, you know, be able to attack Queens, do a lot of damage to them with the Hellions out on the map, yep. and really just have harass potential and kind of make that third delayed a little bit. Yeah, and, and that's the, the sole purpose pretty much of this build right here. Uh, it kind of follows the whole, you know, 1-1-1 uh, setup. Uh, of course, it's not your standard just 1-1-1 build right off the back, but, uh, you know, it is following that up, which is very strong. And uh, you can see here his Hellions are going to add the, the point of having great map control. That'll work on any of those Hellions that are out or um, Lings that are still available out there. And then as you can see right now, we have the Starport swap. And uh, we've almost like we start to have our Banshees coming out any minute now. And there we go. So this was something that was really popularized by uh, Puma a, a while ago. Just going for this Hellion Banshee opening. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I don't know what happened, but everyone kind of started using it. And... Uh, it, it's become very, very prevalent, like I've said a couple of times now. So, he's going to push out with these Hellions here. First Banshee is on the way. And look how few units he has for defense. He has one bunker and four Marines. But it's enough because he knows his opponent was on two bases with no gases for a really long time. Knows that an all-in cannot come because there is no uh, significant gas count on the field at all. And uh, now he's poking around with his Hellions. Queens are denying them, of course. And yep. Zyktomini is actually really, really phenomenal at creep spreading. But, um... Yeah, we're going to see uh, what these Hellions with the Banshees can do. Yeah, it's qu it's quite a unique combination, uh, especially right now we're under the 10-minute mark. The Hell Hellions will do a beautiful job against any Lings that are available. On top of that, you have the Banshees to add additional support. If there possibly was Roaches, those Banshees would be very, very helpful with that. Um, and so the really the biggest thing here that, 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 does, that can kind of counter this at this point is um, excuse me, with those Banshees, it's just those Queens out front. But as you can see, he's not sending the Banshees directly to the front line. He's sending it into the main in order to work on some of that economy damage. Yep. So um, we have a couple of drones going down here. Queen does come over. Uh, one thing to note is a Banshee actually beats a Queen in a 1v1 if they both start firing at the same time. Yep. Because uh, Banshees are really good. But he's just going to go ahead and kill <laughs> some drones. He gets five drones and uh, runs away. And 
Now he's got two Banshees on the field, and he can start to push the front and really apply some serious pressure. There are ten Hellions out on the map right now. Yes, so right away we do see that the third has completed, and right now he's pretty much just using that in order to increase his uh, SCB count, and he's doing very well with that. Furthermore, he has the additional mule, and uh, we do have a push right at the center of the map right now, doing a very nice job here, uh, making sure to not get fully surrounded by those speedlings. And on top of that, has that Banshee in order to help do that damage. And as you can see right there, that Queen went down very easily. And uh, now working towards the third. And uh, doing a great job. He's not losing a ton of units at all, but he's doing a, a ton of damage. Yep. Uh, so it looks like I am a little bit ahead of you here, okay. maybe. No, maybe not. Okay. Uh, no, now we're good. Okay, so right now you yeah. do see that uh, the speedlings are uh, funneling into the third. We do have the Hellions kind of boxed up in the, in the mineral patch there, but perfectly lines up the, the lings, perfectly lines up the drones. And uh, right now this is super effective. And our Terran player is sitting on two base with that third base. And as you can see right now, he has executed it properly and he's gone ahead and moved on to a third. So as of right now, um, he's done a very nice job thus far in this game. Yep, so uh, as we can see, McLeod has moved his third base out and uh, already has Dim completed. He hasn't started combat shield quite yet. He's got 1-1 one, one on the way. He started five additional barracks, and uh, he's getting his armory to time out perfectly to start 2-2 two, two right away. So, uh, our Zerg player is finishing 1-1, one, one, but he has such a low drone count. It's 45-67 to 67 harvesters in our Terran's favor, and our Terran player has taken a pretty significant lead here. This is a dangerous time frame, of course. He's going to be prone to a counterattack yep. due to his lack of units, but uh, Zictomini is droning up for the most part because he knows, you know, he took a lot of damage there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially with the Zerg. A Zerg being on the same amount of bases as a Terran, um, it's quite favorable to that Terran. And I can see why right now, you know, all of his economy is going into his drones. Now, we do have a few units across the field, five or six roaches, a few speedlings, but nothing too crazy. And once again, that Banshee is coming into complete play here, just being able to work on this. Um, so, yeah, definitely a very nice job on his part. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to go over on this free play right here? Nope, uh, McLeod's going to take a little bit of damage here, and uh, he's going to clean it up pretty easily, and he's going to take a huge supply lift, and basically going to keep adding pressure on the Zictomy for the rest of the game, and uh, he does win this, so uh, a very well-played game by McLeod, and, uh, you know, good creep spread by Zictomini, but uh, he just wasn't prepared for, you know, Mass Hellion Banshee, so it worked out very well, so I think we can go ahead and hop out of this and uh, get ready for game two here. Okay. Excellent. In the meantime, why don't you, I'm going to take a look at our quick our lag real quick for some people. So uh, if you want to go ahead and just tell people, you know, where they can find us, where they can find some of our previous uh, slot, our shows, uh, go ahead, go for it. Yeah. Um, so basically we have uh, all of our stuff right here. I'm like looking at the stream trying to figure <laughs> out where I am prepared to do it. And uh, yeah, you can email us, uh, find us on YouTube, on Twitter, all with the same address. It's the Strategist TV. Uh, except for Twitch. Twitch, we're on the A-Move network, so you can find us here, of course, and you can press the follow button if you'd like. And, uh, yeah, we are trying to fix the lag. We know. We're sorry, guys. Uh, it'll, it'll hopefully get fixed very soon. And, uh, yeah, so if you guys have any, uh, constructive criticism, advice, things you want to see, new builds you want to see done, uh, please feel free to email us or whatever. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, Octane. Excellent. How are we doing? Excellent. We're doing good. Uh, I went ahead and made a few adjustments for us, so hopefully that helps you guys out uh, with some of the lag. Um, I hate to take down the stream and bring it back up, but if we really need to, we definitely will to help you guys out um, you know, in order so that you guys can enjoy it. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into game two. If we do see additional lag, we'll definitely um, pause things, make that adjustment, and move on. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm getting at that loaded up, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, once again, guys, you're just joining us. Uh, my name is Octane Pro, my co-host Buddha. Uh, we really appreciate you guys stopping by tonight and hope to see you guys here in the future. Um, I have the replay up. I am on faster, and I'm starting in three, two, and one. And in the upper right-hand corner, we do have the Blue Terran being represented by Keen MVP. And his opponent spawning at the bottom left is the Orange Zerg. I know you guys can't read it unless you speak Korean, but <laughs> it's Xenex's life. And uh, this is actually, I think, game three or two out of the series. I'm mm -hmm. not really sure which. But this was actually a really funny series when I went over it. This is from the TSL qualifiers uh, number 16 in Korea or something like that. 15 okay. or 16 or something. And uh, Xenex life, this is the finals of it. So whoever wins this gets into TSL or whatever or something like that. Wow. And Okay. <laughs> Zenex Life six pooled a Terran 
twice in a best of three. I was, oh man, and it worked once, but uh, he's not going to do that here because that is not what we're trying to show you guys. I'm just letting you know, really, really interesting because of this uh, one depot expansion that uh, six pools are coming back into play against Terran. Really weird. Yeah, and so right away we do see the 10 supply depot going down. Very, very basic. Very typical is what we discussed from the last one there. And uh, right away we should see the 12 barracks going down uh, for Keen MVP. And we do see that getting executed right away. Nothing too, too crazy uh, on this map here, um, Daybreak. And uh, in the meantime, we do just see proper scouting going on uh, from uh, the r Reserve. We have our Overlord going north and another one moving uh, directly across the map there, which we'll get there in time possibly to see the expansion. All right. So, uh, you know, Keen's going to go ahead and scout as his barracks is finishing up here because he's doing that one depot expand. He wants to make sure there isn't a six pool coming, especially since... There were already two in this series. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we're going to see the exact same opening here. So uh, hopefully you guys are prepared for that. Do we want to fast forward through this a little bit, or do we want to watch a second game with this build order? No, we could jump through it. That's fine. Uh, what time are okay. you looking to go to? Uh, I'm just going to speed it up here, and I will let you know in one second. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and go to... Oh, oh, no, we don't want to speed through this. <laughs> okay. Well, right now I'm at about the 252 mark. All right, I'm at 320. Okay. So uh, I'll get to you. Let that's me know when you get up there and it's start casting octanes. That's right. That's right. No <laughs> problem. The 320 and I am there now. Excellent. Okay. So I'm jumping back down to faster here, hitting play, and we do see right now the marine just working on the bottom of that supply depot. Nothing too crazy, uh, but we do see the command center going down, uh, which is part of that initial build there. And as you can see, there's only one supply depot. Um, but okay. so pretty much pretty cool. Now, what do you spot here, Buddha? I know you see something. We have double gas before a second depot. He is delaying everything so much. Still only on one marine, only making SCVs, and he adds a second depot after the two gases. So we're gonna see like the fastest tech ever out of Terran. <laughs> this is like, this is this is actually uh, crazy. I saw this and I was like, there's no way this works. Well, but it's super it cool does. though because of the fact that he's gonna have the expansion up with the early gas available to him. So as you said there, he's gonna have tech super early and he's gonna have the economy to support it as well. Yeah, but that means he only has like nine guys on minerals right now, and he has a mule out, so uh, not that many guys on minerals, but his tech is going to be so fast. And, uh, <laughs> yep, uh, basically what this should tell us, it, you know, what I, what I kind of inferred, is that we're probably going to see Cloak come out, because that's a lot of gas, really quickly. And yep. uh, I think I think that's what we're going to say. Hang on, let me check my notes. <laughs> that's okay, yeah, it no is. big deal. <laughs> so the command center is completely finished uh, in the natural, and uh, he's going to start to occupy those uh, minerals there. But as you can see right away, uh, that factory is about 50% completed, along with that reactor available here. Now on the other side, we do see a third getting taken for his opponent with the Arn Zerg. And uh, so right now, the Arn Zerg is kind of hanging out, droning up very nicely. But as for Keen MVP here, uh, we do see a bunker going down, and I like the placement of that. Uh, it helps out with, you know, still allowing the flow of the units properly, uh, but it helps to defend as well uh, for any run buys or anything like that. So, uh, factory is completed. We are going to see the swap between the factory and the barracks. And to follow that up, we actually do have the starport going down. So once again, we are following kind of a one rack fast expand into a one one one, which is extremely popular. And uh, on top of that, the starport started, and we do have the tech lab going down. So you're going to have Hellions, and just a guess from me, I haven't gone completely through the replay there, but Hellions along with the Banshees as well. Yep, so a uh, very similar build to last game. Yep. And I did include a couple of these because this is probably the coolest and uh, most popular style that we've been seeing lately. So as we can see here, he's delaying his Hellions a little bit, um, just so he has a couple more minerals for when this Banshee's going to come out. Yep. And... Uh, gonna start now man yep excellent sounds good and uh, in the chat room there uh, that link for the YouTube videos did get deleted I did make a change there uh, youtube.com slash the strategist TV uh, anyways jumping back into it we do see cloak getting researched right now so we know right away we're gonna do heavy with hellions and our cloak and that's super early I mean we just hit the two minute or uh, the seven minute mark I'm sorry oh, two minute cloak, two minute oh, cloak. Oh, Bam. the game so quickly <laughs> it's not overpowered or anything <laughs> And, uh, yeah, uh, keep in mind, Keen does have his original Marine just patrolling back and forth on the left side of the base to watch for Overlords and try to keep him from scouting the cloak. And uh, these Hellions are going to poke in a little bit, kill a couple of Zerglings, not really take any significant damage, but, um, you know, just denying a little bit of creep spread. The creep spread's not very far out for life right now. Yep, and those Hellions just holding map control very nicely there. 
Um, now, very, very typical here is to see the creep spread at the third, kind of up a little bit farther, maybe to that second um, overlord there. Um, you know, and, and then what that allows for is for quick defense, because a lot of the times the Terran pressure will come from the north side there, so we might actually see creep spread moving up from there. But in the meantime, you know, Cloak is just about finished, about 85% completed, and uh, he's actually following up with that early Hellion um, Banshee into more of a bio build. Yeah, uh, he's getting that double eBay for fast upgrades. Terrans are loving their faster upgrades. A third command center on the way. He's getting stim. He's going to start combat shield right after. And, uh, you know, his Banshees aren't doing all that much significant damage, especially considering they have Cloak. So, uh, as we can see, a, a Banshee does come into the third base of life here and uh, is killing off a few drones. Good focus firing, very important. Uh, but it, it, life's just going to re-drone, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this Overseer pops, and it's 71 Harvesters to 42. So, Zerg player is still in a good position. But look at our Terran. He's powering very hard. He's getting his upgrades. Everything is going pretty smoothly for him. Yeah, yeah, he's sitting very comfortably right now. The third does just finish in the natural, um, so he will most likely be floating that over here shortly. And uh, if you take a look right now, he's going to be sitting on five racks uh, with his factory and his starport completed and that third completed all at the nine minute and 30 second mark. Uh, so very, very yeah. impressive. Back in the main, we have uh, another Banshee getting more drone kills, actually, and uh, this is really important by being able to use Banshees on this map, especially where the bases are so spread out. Uh, he's going to get a lot of drone kills, and he's actually going to end up getting 17 by the end of this, wow. uh, which is really, really good. And look at this. He even sees the Spire with his Banshee. Like, he, get, he has complete ability to scout the entire base because the Queens can only chase him so far. He has Cloak, yeah. right? Like, he has plenty of time to scout whatever he wants. So now he's going to be completely prepared. Uh, he knows the timing on the Spire. He's going to start turrets just in time. And, uh, yeah, our Terran player is in a great position taking his third while the Zerg can't even attempt to take a fourth at this point. Yeah, I mean, right now, this is quite unique. It's a little bit riskier earlier in the game with the super early tech, um, you know, with a lot invested into that. But as you can see here, as the game progresses past the 10 and 15 minute mark, that early tech move ends up putting him ahead, actually, uh, quite a bit when it comes to his tech and uh, being easily prepared. I mean, right now, so we had five barracks. He's adding on an additional two to make that to seven. Um, so he made a very easy tech swap, too. Um, but in early game, the Hellion Banshee was extremely powerful and strong. And now you're seeing him move out of that into something full-time. And right away, those Marines counter those mutas very nicely, all because of that quick scout. All right. Well, uh, uh, we can continue to watch this, but I think we've got a lot of information out of it. He's finishing yep. his 1-1. One, one. Zerg's only on 1-1. One, one. Zerg's on muta tech, which is good for our uh, Terran player because, you know, Terran players don't want to deal with infinite infestors like they are today. Mutas are much easier to deal with, in my <laughs> opinion. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into game number three. I think you're Octane. Excellent. Sounds good. Uh, we are aware of the lag, guys. That's uh, something we're going to have to adjust here and work on um, next week for you guys. Um, we want to continue through the episode for you guys. I do apologize. Um, this will be up by the end of the night tonight on YouTube.com slash The Strategist TV. And, uh, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, let me go ahead and get game three loaded up here. And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, I wonder what's going on, because you weren't lagging when you were doing um, uh, StarCast, were you? No, so that's just kind of unique, something, you know, of course, there's always something technical when you're running into these things, um, but no, no big deal. Uh, we'll try to get that adjusted for you guys and fixed for next week, so make sure you check us out next week, Sunday at 10 p.m., uh, where we're going to go over the uh, two racks uh, pressure for TVP. But in the meantime here, uh, I do have our match loaded up for Game 3. Buddha, are you set? Yes, sir. All righty. We are going to start game three in three, two, and one. And in the upper left-hand corner on Entombed Valley, we do have the blue Terran player being represented by TSL Polt. And at the bottom left, we have NS Hoso's Freaky, uh, who is known for his pretty crazy ZVZ play. Uh, I think he was one of the first ones that we really saw in professional play go for that mass, mass investor style. Yeah. Uh, but this is, of course, not going to be a ZVZ. It's going to be a TVZ. So, um, uh, I was going to say it's going to be interesting to see how he plays this one out, but I've already seen how he plays this one out. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we're going to see a really cool build from Pult, and I have a couple of things to say about it. Uh, tell us how you really feel, Buddha. We'll just tell see when we really get there, feel. I guess. <laughs> What's that? I said, tell us how you really feel. You seem very excited. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Yeah, but uh, TSL Pult, uh, if not a, a lot of you have been familiar with him, uh, he's actually made a huge showing over the past year uh, within the StarCraft II community. 
Uh, very popular games with him versus Stefano. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, you know, uh, very, very cool guy and is doing a ton uh, for TSL right now. Um, and I think this is the first game, actually, over the past few weeks that we've actually had the opportunity to cast of his. Um, so pretty exciting, as I am a Terran player and really enjoy it. But nothing too, too crazy here. Um, guys, we do have a typical, you know, 10 Supply Depot and 12 Barracks. And on the opposite yep. side here, just scouting from both players, you can see here that uh, Freaky did scout across positions there and does have the Overlord. So a little bit timing and the benefit of TSL Pult. Yeah, so, well, let's talk about this a little bit too here. Um, so Freaky, uh, this map, and this is more for tournament players and people that play on the MLG version of this map. In the Blizzard version of this map, you can spawn anywhere with your opponent, right? You can yep. spawn at, in any location. On the MLG version, which this is, you can't spawn close thirds. Yep. So you can't spawn horizontally, only uh, cross or vertically. Uh, so Freaky, of course, going to scout uh, cross first with his drone and vertically with his overlord, and that's going to give him a good scout. And now he's going to see one racks expand, no gases. Yep. And what's he going to do? We're watching. We're watching. <laughs> I'm not sure when he does it. Oh, he's... Well, I don't know. Oh, there he goes. He, he takes the gas. Okay. Yep. So, this is annoying for Pult because the metagame, of course, like we've seen in the last two games, mm -hmm. is to take a really fast double gas, and yep. now he can't. Uh, <laughs> so, basically, Pult... I, this is what I was talking about. I don't know if he's going to change his build, per se, uh, but... He alters it a tiny bit. Into reactor Hellions. I correct, guess. correct. Yeah, I mean he does take the, the command center, which is which is typical there, and he is taking the gas there, but he does have to alter it a little bit because the gas timing is going to be off by a tad. Um, but at the same time, you know, and all this is for for any of our new players is, is just to slow the tech progression here for TSL Pulp, which he's doing. You know, he isn't able to take that gas uh, at the appropriate timing. Uh, but in the meantime, here we do have a. Um, Nice bunker actually going down, and the whole purpose of this bunker, guys, is just to go ahead and stop the uh, speedling surrounds, uh, which it works perfectly right here, uh, and also allows for some damage for any speedlings that try to go up the ramp. Yeah, he's actually going to uh, add on to this a little bit later and uh, put an engineering bay in front of it even, so that Zerglings can only get on from the left side, yep. which means they have to go all the way around the bunker and stuff. And uh, Yeah, it looks like he's going to hold the Zergling pressure off, no problem. Eight Zerglings is a bit much for a Zerg player to make at this point in the game. It was yeah. a little bit confused, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as of right now here, we do have... Uh, he's still TSL Pult still sitting on one gas there, um, so he isn't going to make a huge tech push at this point in the game here, uh, but he does go ahead and follow up with that um, factory and the uh, reactor, and what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and allow him to use those Hellions to scout the map properly, and he is following up with two additional racks. So instead, our last game we, and our game before that, we did see a one-on-one -on -one combination after the um, one racks fast expand. We are now seeing more of a Hellion combination fast expand with the additional bio coming in um, for mm. TSL Pulp. Yeah, and this is, uh, again, a step away from what we've been seeing, right? We've been seeing a fast starport uh, or a fast third command center or both. But here, Pult's going to go into more of a bio build. He's going to make some Hellions, but this is definitely not the same opening we've been seeing. It's a slight variation, so I uh, definitely wanted to give this game a look and uh, let you guys see kind of what Pult does. Because Pult, of course, one of the best Terran players in the world for sure. Yeah, check out where he put that engineering bay, actually. You yep. can see he put it right in front of that bunker. And the whole purpose of that is, okay, Lings come up the front, they go to attack. Where do they have to go to get to that bunker? All the way through the base, through the minerals, and then to the backside of that bunker. So very, very nice job on his part. Um, in doing that, and this is why, as you said, this makes him one of the best uh, players out there uh, when it comes to Terran, is because of this. So we are seeing additional barracks is going down, and Hellions going out to scout the map. Yeah. Uh, so, one thing I do want to point out is, uh, take a look at the Overlord placement for Freaky here. It's covering the entire left side of the map to look for drops. He scouted the natural's gas and saw that there's one there already, so in his head, he might be thinking this is three gas already, and uh, yeah. that's a lot of gas for this point in the game, so it's not, but he needs to be aware of it, and he is. And uh, Pult instead is going for Stim, and he's going to go for a very fast combat shield here, and he's going to hit it 1-1 one, one timing with Bio and Hellions. So right now we did see the rocks go down for Freaky, uh, most likely preparing for a, a third coming up here shortly, because there isn't anything crazy out of Freaky right now. 
Um, and we, we don't see anything out of the norm. I mean, he has gone ahead and made his bailing nest. So he is prepared right there to kind of follow the Ling Bling, most likely Muta combination there. Um, and uh, those Hellions doing a very nice job, you know, holding map control. As you can see, there are no Lings in the center of the map whatsoever. Everything is on the outside. Your Overlord's to the outside. He has a few speedlings to the outside. So a very nice job by Pult of just holding map control, stopping his opponent from scouting any of that uh, land aggression which may be coming his way. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, in the grand scheme of things right now, Pult is really trying to hit a timing here. Yeah. He's keeping all of his money pretty low. Uh, he's not starting a third command center yet. He's going for Stim and Combat Shield. And this is going to be an all-in push from him, right? He's thinking, okay... I need to do some serious damage here with this. Yep. But instead, Rex, you're going to see Freaky all in Pult first. <laughs> and and uh, this is actually really, really good for Pult. Because now, he has a huge force he was going to all in with. But his opponent is actually going to all in first. Correct. And uh, as we can see, Roach, Baneling all in coming up the ramp. There are already Marauders and Marines with yeah. Dim about to finish here. And uh, yeah, LOL, slow Marine splitting. <laughs> Yeah, I did notice that right there. We do have the Hellions from behind kind of coming in to work on some of those speedlings, which are the reinforcements there. And uh, Marauders available to work on those approaches. And additional speedlings getting funneled in. But uh, this will work out most likely in Pulse favor here. Um, just because of everything that's going on. And, uh, yeah. and go ahead. Sorry, so it looks like Pulse taking a lot of damage. But realistically, uh, he hasn't lost a single SCV. Yep. He lost two supply depots and some units. But... Take a look at the drone count. It's 44 to 38 in Pult's favor. And so now he's like, oh, all right. I'll just start at third base. <laughs> yep. I'll start my plus one armor. And we'll just play a macro game because now I'm way ahead. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what's happening. A lair just starts for Freaky. He starts his third. He starts two more gas. And he's like, oh, God, I better tech up because Ling Roach is not going to cut it at this point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And pretty much Pult is set up for the macro game here, as you were just explaining. And, uh, yeah, this is pretty much... Uh, a very nice variation of the one racks fast explain um, into kind of Hellions for map control. Um, all because of the fact of just that gas getting taken. So very nice job by TSL Pulp. Um, anything else you want to point out or review for this game? Nope. The game goes to about 17 minutes and 45 seconds, uh, which means that, you know, it was really Pulp takes his third base, macros up more, yep. takes his lead while he has it, and pushes and wins the game. Yes, I completely agree. It was a very nice job by TSL Pult. Uh, let's go ahead and get game four loaded up uh, for you guys. Um, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Once again, um, check us out on YouTube. We have our previous, uh, the previous episode three was the Forge Fast Expand for Protoss. Um, episode two, what was episode two? Remind me here. Or, I'm sorry, that was episode two. Episode one was the DRG7 Roach Rush. Um, so if you're a huge fan of DRG, make sure you check that out. We went over that. In complete detail, and that is over at youtube.com slash the strategist TV. Uh, I am into game three, and just to make sure that was MMA versus Liquid Xenio, is that correct? That's correct. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and get started in three, two, and one. And starting in the right. bottom right hand corner as the green Zerd is Liquid Xenio. And at the top left, we have Slayers MMA, and uh, this game was so cool actually i thought oh oh this is this is a build that i'm <laughs> going to work on over and over and over again because like the idea behind it is like at first i was like oh this is really dumb and i was like oh my god this is really genius yeah and uh yeah <laughs> this is a this is a pretty balanced map i think it's considered one of the most balanced maps in the pool actually so uh yeah, uh, do we want to fast forward a little bit sure. through this? Sure, what the, go, ahead, go ahead and locate the timing that we're looking at. Um, I will let you know. And we'll kind of go from there. And uh, All right, let's go what do you got? when the gas, what do you when the gas is going to take. Okay, okay. Sorry, eight times is not fast enough. <laughs> okay, uh, three minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, hold on. I will speed up to that so we can show our viewers kind of what we're looking at here. Almost there, about the two minute mark right now. Zipping along here. Makes the supply Devo, makes the barracks. And you said the three minute and what? Three minute and 20 second mark. 20 second, okay, I am there. Going back down to faster and starting in three, two, and one. And we do see that he takes the gas there and he also goes for the command center. So he actually took the command center before the gas. And then the, yes, and and the that's... double gas followed up. Yes, and that's uh, that's how we usually see it, of course. But yep. um, 
one other thing to note here is there is no like second depot. We're having that double gas before second depot again. So again, in my head when I watched this, I was like, okay, it's gonna be a cloak build. Yep. But it's not. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so basically, MMA is going to make SCVs and stuff. Yeah, MMA and, uh, is doing very well scouting right now. He's scouting his opponent, checking out for any timing stuff. He scouts no gas right there. He does scout the uh, spawning pool. And then he is making his way down to the natural, so he is able to kind of see the timing, see if he has any spine crawlers built or anything like that. So very nice job on his part that early. Now he does follow up with a nice little wall off here. It definitely reminds me of almost like a Protoss build versus Zerg. Mm. Uh, walling off at the yep. bottom of the ramp there, kind of between the ramp and the main. And the whole purpose of that is either your opponent has to go straight into your bunker or has to go around your natural command center and come in. So either way, this is very defensive and quite a good idea. Uh, but now we're seeing right now, he's following up with the factory and building once again into that reactor. Yeah, so uh, again, we're going to have a reactor hell in build because that's the variation we're looking at this week for the most part. Yep. And um, I don't know uh, I don't know what to do, what to do, <laughs> man. Uh, I'm sorry, you guys. These replays are going to get really repetitive, but that's yep. the point of the show, right? Like, to show these build orders and the slight variations that we have here. So uh, that factory does finish, and bam. Bam! <laughs> what is that? Double a star. starport. Yep, and there's the other one in the back, which is very, very cool. And and the whole purpose of this is, okay, if you get scouted at the front, they do see a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Okay, but now to put that double, that extra starport in the back is a very wise choice on his part. And actually, just talking about that, you do see an Overlord coming in. And look at that timing. Right away, you see that um, SCV go and put a uh, Supply Depot down. So he can keep track of that. And the whole purpose of that is, okay, if I have Supply Depots around my base there, uh, I can see exactly when an Overlord is coming in, and I can get a Marine there right away. And as you can see, look at that. Mm -hmm. This reaction, two Marines on their way. And the whole purpose is to stop your opponent mm -hmm. from scouting it. And it looks like we're going to have those Banshee follow-ups. Yep, uh, so we're going to have two port Banshee off of a one Rax Expanse, something that we almost never ever see. And he's not going to have enough gas quite for Cloak, I don't think. Uh, I mean, he could yeah. get Cloak, but then he couldn't really make Banshees and stuff. So yeah. uh, he's going to go ahead and not go Reactor Hellion. He's going Reactor Marines with Banshees right now. This is... <laughs> This is so cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, and, and MMA is, is definitely known for his uh, Marine play uh, and his skill with Marines when it comes to the micro. So to have Marine and Banshees is a really, really good idea on his part there. Um, and uh, pretty much, as you can see for our Zerg um, player, he is going ahead and pushing out of his creep spread there. He does have, um, he is sitting on two base right now. He hasn't actually pushed out to a third. Following it up there, we do see a Roach Warren going down. We're about the 745 mark. Um, and he's following that up with a bailing nest, so you're gonna have you know Ling, Bling, and Roach kind of combination, kind of what we saw last game uh, actually, um, with the army composition from the Zerg player. And on top of that, there uh, it looks like we are pumping out Banshees for MMA at this point. Yeah, so you got two coming across the map, and they're actually going down a path where Overlords aren't very often, which is really cool, right? He's going around the tower, and he's not going to the edge of the map because that's where Overlords are always stationed. And uh, he sees that a third went down because he had an SCV there to scout it because he's so smart. And uh, look at this, double eBay comes down, and he's adding. He's going to start adding on more barracks and a third base. So uh, these double Banshees coming around, coming around, coming around. What are they going to do damage? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's perfect timing for him, too. The Banshees are going out to add the pressure, to add the harassment. And then he can comfortably take his third uh, because the Zerg opponent is very busy, you know, keeping up with those Banshees. And right away, two Banshees definitely beat out a Queen. Clean that up. One, two, three, four units right there. So very nice job uh, with those Banshees. And on top of that, he is going to go ahead and, uh, as we said, build more barrackses. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to see him basically go into Bio Banshee, which is ridiculous. But uh, he's got four Banshees out right now. He's making a fifth and a sixth. And he actually goes up to eight Banshees in this game. Look how fast he takes these queens down. Yeah. I mean, they're transfusing and immediately losing the same amount of health right away. Yeah, Banshees are very strong, especially at this point in the game there. Because at this point, the Zerg, most Zerg players don't really have much to deal with them. And when you get past that two Banshee mark, they're extremely strong. Um, and right now, Queen's going down, uh, Spore Crawler's going down, and uh, oh man, it's just doing so well right now, denying his opponent, uh, keeping his opponent busy, and all in order to get that 1-1 completed for his upgrades, and the additional barracks is completed. Yeah, so he actually, like, 
picked off a spire and forced to cancel on it. So Xenio is in a lot of trouble here. Uh, he's basically got no drones at his third. He can't get rid of these banshees in his main with his queens. He's got to use spore crawlers, but like the spore crawlers can't walk around. So he's got to make like 30 of them or find a way to get a spire up. And he's trying again in his yeah. main. And as we can see, supply is 90 to 80 right now. Yeah. 55 harvesters to 49. MMA is in complete control of the game at this point. Yeah, I mean, the, the sport crawlers are in no position to deal with these banshees at this point. So every time, you know, he's killing a queen, he's killing more drones. He has to keep up with the drones. So that's why his army composition right now is so low. He's spending all that money to keep his economy up. And in the meantime, MMA can just take his time. He can build up on the banshees, build up on his marines right now, um, and kind of move forward. And uh, the one thing I am noticing, which is kind of weird at this point in the game, is his marines do not have combat shield. Yeah, I just uh, I he, just noticed that I, I I can't I mean unless he's starting that right now no he's not no he's only got one tech lab wow. so he's like yeah. just not it's just limited by it and he, he put it all into the stim there and in the meantime we do have a speedling run by um, and it looks like it actually runs away there in order to help prepare with this push and this push is so strong with these banshees and wings. yeah uh, it's sixty three fifty four harvesters now and MMA is basically going to come in here. Clean up the third base. He's got a lot of Marines. Not a lot of Zerglings are out right now. And uh, basically, MMA just kind of wins from here. I mean, the game goes four minutes longer. And uh, as we can see, Xenio is uh, just going to lose, basically. <laughs> yeah, and it all came down to those Banshees. Uh, so very nice job. And as you saw there, guys, he definitely will just jump out of this in the meantime. Um, so he went ahead and went with the one racks Fast Expand. He followed up into uh, going into kind of the Reactor Hellion. And then instead of going for just like a 1 1 1 typical setup, um, he built that additional starport. And that's what completely changed the game for him was that additional starport pushed out, did an excellent job. Uh, and we'll actually jump into game five um, and uh, give us a sec here. We'll get that loaded up for you guys. If you are checking this out on Twitch, make sure you do check out our YouTube. And if you are checking this out on YouTube, make sure you do check us out live Sundays oh, cool. at. 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, and definitely check us out for the live show. And uh, we promise for next week to have any lag uh, taken care of for you guys. Uh, so we do apologize to our live viewers, but we will have that taken care of for next week. I promise. I promise. <laughs> so, so someone in the chat said, that's the first time I've seen that build. That's the first time I've seen that build. And yeah. all I do all day is cast. So, uh, yeah, really cool. I, I don't know. Uh, uh oh, do I have the right game here? I think so. Uh, oh, my notes are right. Game 5, uh, TSL symbol versus a Chinese name that I don't recognize. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think, well, that's actually, I'm pretty sure that's Korean with the the lines, with yes. the lines. Yes, But yep. uh, All right, we're, let's start. Ready? Okay, excellent. Starting in 3, 2, and 1. And in the bottom right-hand corner, we do have the blue Zerg as TSL symbol. And at the top left, we have uh, Marine King Prime. Okay, so this really confuses me um, because the title of the replays mm -hmm. that I had said this was Marine King against Startail Curious. Ah, okay. So this could be Symbol, this could be Curious, this could be Marine King, this could be a totally <laughs> mislabeled game. You gotta love that also as well because of the fact of like a lot of the players play on their teammates' accounts if they don't have that account for a certain tournament and stuff like that. Like we even had that with our own. We did the Strategist Open to help kickstart the show, and we had that same thing going on with some FXO players. So, um, yeah, with FXO, ASD, and Cream. So it, it happens all the time. So if we do get this off by a tad, we do apologize, guys. But um, in the meantime here, we do have the Supply Depot going down at the top of the ramp for the 10 mark for our Terran player. Indeed. I was finding the spot that we want to speed it up no, to. No, sounds good. I do appreciate it. I wish there was like a way where I could tell a replay to start at a certain point, you know, and then just... Someday, someday, when Blizzard makes someday. it a little bit more user-friendly for people like us, it would be, they will do that. <laughs> Alright, so why don't we go ahead and jump into four minutes here. Alright, sounds good. Jumping ahead here, bear with me here. So we're going to do fast casting. So we do have the barracks completing here. We do have the Orbital Command getting created. And in the meantime, we do have the command center going down at the natural. And now I'm done talking very fast and stopping at the four minute. And going to start in three, two, and one, go. All right, so you know what would be really hard? What's that? Playing StarCraft on eight times speed. <laughs> Can you imagine how much attention you would pay? Your oh, APM would have to be like 
four yeah. or eight times higher, right? Like yep. to press all the buttons in the same amount of time. That would be so cool. Yes. Uh, I think Banley would be a little bit overpowered then, but maybe not. Uh, yes. So it looks like we have two additional barracks coming down from Marine King here. Yeah. And uh, that why is am I not surprised? Barrier. Why am I not surprised from Marine King? <laughs> <laughs> and oh look at that two more barracks so we have five barracks right now before any gas at all and look at this. it's it's actually before the second no it's not before the second i lied but this is this is so different right like yeah. this is kind of like what mma was doing he took a build that was very common the one racks expand and he just it was like well what if i just make a bunch of marines first yeah yeah, this is actually pretty, pretty cool. I mean, there's no gas getting taken right now, and I like how he has one Marine near his gas, and his gas is for his natural, you know, help out with Overlord Scouts. Uh, he has a Supply Depot going down for looking for anything, and on top of that, he has this Marine as well. So he's trying to stop any scouting that's going on, you know, that could scout this out, because right away, if you scouted this at Zerg, you'd be like, oh, crap, okay, we're going Baylings. But right now, I mean, five barracks is pumping out Marines simultaneously here. On top of no gases, um, you know this is this is quite a unique setup. Yeah. So um, basically, he's gonna make a lot of marines, and he's gonna attack, and uh, it's not gonna kill simple, but it'll get close. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's gonna add that early pressure. I mean, look at the freaking cliffside, the amount of marines just sitting there trying to stop scouting. I mean, beautiful job on his part. I mean, that's the only way you really counter your opponent is to get that scouting learn what they're doing and progress from there and so he's doing a very nice job stopping that scouting and so let's look at the timing on this because sure uh almost every zerg these days goes up to like 45 44 drones and then takes all their gases at the same time right yep. so look symbol just finished his gases doesn't have any gas income yet it's just starting right now and marine king's moving out on the map with marines and SEVs, and he's gonna hit like before anything can happen you know what i mean like yep. Yeah, before any, before any the, tech can be taken or anything Yeah, before like the third player can tech at all. And this is going to be so cool. Uh, this is such a good timing. And this is him, like, going into replays and being like, oh, they're actually, like, really weak up to this point. Yeah. And uh, this is his this is his change, metagame, man. Yeah, I mean, the amount of replays that these guys must review is, is got to be astronomical, um, you know, and making little critiques to their games. I mean, uh, that's why they're pros, but it looks like right now those Marines are doing a very nice job. Those, those uh, Spine Crawlers being very effective along with those Queens there. And uh, these Marines are, you know, took out so many drones. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, unit loss count right there, uh, you know, was sitting right there. 28 units lost uh, for symbol there, and most of those were drones. Yeah, 26 workers killed for Marine King right now, and Symbol has killed 13 of Marine Kings that he brought out, but, I mean, uh, look at this, it's done a ton of damage, Marine King's up in supply, his tech's a little bit behind. Yeah, yeah. There's but, no combat uh, shield at all, um, there's no plus one complete at this point, so I mean, that's kind of the one thing that's holding him back here, but our Zerg player does hold on, but, but at what sacrifice, you know, his entire front has been lost, all those units, all those drones, so now he's going to spend a huge amount of time droning up to follow this up. Right, so this is a very simple build that I just wanted to show people because almost anyone can do this build that Marine King did. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. you know, uh, just just look at the timing. It's like 6.30 when the Zergs take their gas and uh, push across, and, and you can try it. And uh, it, you're not going to be playing against Symbol, I don't think. So <laughs> they're probably not going to have a very good chance of holding it. But Symbol uh, is going to uh, all in here back, and I think Marine King's actually going to lose. But... Hey, you know, you win some, you lose some. That's so, right. Uh... That's right. Excellent. Well, that was that was five games that we just went over for the one racks fast expand for Terran. Um, if you are an opponent of a Terran player trying to scout this out, the, the, the or and kind of counter this, the biggest way that you can do this is scouting. Um, as we emphasize in all of our shows, you can't counter or know what your opponent's going without your scouting. So. Scout in early, uh, we're talking, you know, with, you know, very, very early in the game in order to see, you know, okay, is he taking that one rack? Is he making that command center? Uh, and then on top of that, scout a few minutes later to see, okay, is he going with a 1-1-1 one, one, one build off of this, as we saw in the first two games? Um, is he going to go into a crazy Banshee type of play, as we saw in the previous game? Or is he going to go with this, which is like a huge Marine push? Um, so make sure you guys definitely get that scouting taken care of. Any last notes to add with that build, with countering, with scouting, with opponents, anything like that that you can think of, Buddha? Um, no, I think we covered that pretty well. I, I do want to say, cause someone in the chat actually asked, sure. what is the downside of the two-port Banshee build? Yep. I think that's a good thing to address, actually. Sure. A lot of the weaknesses uh, that these very strong-looking builds have. And uh, I think the, the biggest disadvantage is you have to take your gases very early, including your third gas. So you have less guys on minerals. 
So as we can see, his third base, even though he got it up quickly, was still delayed a little bit. Mm -hmm. He didn't really get his Marine count out that quickly. Uh, we saw that he had a very low uh, low Marine count, and he only had Stim, right? He didn't have Combat Shield. wasn't even finished when he was pushing, actually. Yeah. So everything very, very, very delayed due to the high gas cost of two-port Banshee. And uh, while it is very strong and, you know, obviously... <laughs> abuses a lot of the things that Zerg lack. Yes. Uh, it, it it has its weaknesses for sure. And uh, looking into that and trying to find a way to counter it is, is something that's very difficult. Uh, but definitely there are some things you could definitely exploit. Not necessarily all inning, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of uh, ways to exploit the uh, high gas counter of the Terran that early. Yep, excellent. Well, thank you very much for explaining that. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, uh, feel free to ask us um, via email. Uh, you can go ahead and check that out uh, at our email address over at thestrategisttv at gmail.com. We'd be more than willing to get back to you within a day or two. Um, also, email us over there and let us know, you know, hey, I want you, can you go over this build? Or, hey, I really liked watching, uh, you know, this player. Can you guys go over that build and kind of diagnose and break apart his builds? So check that out, thestrategisttv at gmail.com. Uh, on top of that, check us out on Twitter. Um, you know, we post when we go live and, and a lot of stuff that's kind of come to our attention. Uh, our builds, tournaments, stuff like that. So check us out on Twitter, the Strategist TV. And then you can find all of our shows, all the content, even the Strategist Open, uh, the tournament that we did uh, where we actually had TSL Hune won that tournament. Uh, it was a cash prize tournament over at YouTube at youtube.com slash the Strategist TV. And then finally, uh, if you're on YouTube, check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash TV. If you're on Twitch, you're already checking us out. So thank you very much for checking us out. Um, we are going to work on that lag there for you guys. Uh, as we mentioned there, uh, we do apologize. Um, you know, technical issues do arise. So we very much appreciate your patience with everything. Um, and, uh, yeah. So in the meantime there, um, catch the strategist next week on July 22nd at 10 p.m. Eastern, where we go over the Terran 2 racks early pressure. Yes. <laughs> And we have Buddha completely distracted by the chat room. This is why we don't. I'm allow, sorry, man. We don't. This is why we don't allow Buddha in the chat room. We put up the blinders. We block him because he he, he gets distracted. So once again, guys, make sure you guys check us out next week, um, 10 p.m. right here at Amu TV. Also, check out some of the uh, our, our brother and sister um, uh, shows that are going on. Starcast Thursday nights uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, they just had Kim Rom from Steel Series on. They've had a lot of other people. Um, MLG Sundance is on there. In Control's been on. Sir Scoots has been on. Um, I think they have Complexities Jason Late coming on the next few weeks. So definitely check that out. And then if you like Blizzard games, check out This Week in Blizz. Um, that is on Monday nights. Uh, they go over anything and everything Blizzard related when it comes to uh, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, and um, uh, uh, Diablo. So until next week, we'll, we'll see you guys then. All right, you guys. Remember, practice hard, win easy.